hello, hello, hello. It's uh, coffee time. Yeah, it's not, it's not good news, is it? Not good news at all, because um, there's a war going on, but then you know that. But in the UK, they've announced a new scheme where we can take in uh, Ukraine refugees into our home and get paid 350 quid a month for it. But it has to be for a minimum of six months, and we have to know the names of the refugees who we're um, who we're taking in now? I thought now this is this is this is going to be this is a get rich quick scheme. So what I'm, I've got two options: I either get rid of the kids and go and live in the shed, and we're taking two genuine Ukrainian refugees, or I pretend that the kids are Ukrainian refugees. Three hundred and fifty quid a month, you know. 700 if it's 350 is it 350 a person then it's 700 get a whole family in that's the that the mortgage will be paid off in no time but yeah this is a again i'm kind of conflicted about this i mean yeah it's great <laughs> it's great i mean people want to help but really shouldn't governments be setting up special like camps and things you know where people can be brought in and treated and you know because i'm sure some of them will be suffering from psychological the psychological effects of, of what they've been through you know um there's you know there's there must be professional ways rather than than the burden of this being put onto the great british public you know i'm sure there should be a system because again it just again it you think about people exploiting the system and you know, it's going to go whatever they, whatever this government does, it's going to go wrong. <laughs> you know, really, again, it's another way of kind of them absolving themselves of any responsibility of bringing in um, refugees themselves. Um, so, you know, I think it's because we still haven't done, I still haven't uh, figured out what to do with the uh, the Afghan refugees and the Syrian refugees. <laughs> And everybody else that's turned up. So what are we going to do with all these people? It's because you need to build homes. You need to build a, a whole infrastructure to support all this. But we don't do that. Um, but yeah, don't worry, folks. Uh, Putin deliberately targeted uh, a base 12 miles from the NATO border. Yay. They claim it was a mercenary base. Um, again, it's somewhere that... Oh, it's It's... It's tantalisingly close to World War Three. Plus, uh, intelligence says that um, Putin has asked China for help, which is, um, I don't know, it's not, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. But um, in Russia, the the uh, the effects of the sanctions is. Uh, is is really kicking in because um, we have one. <laughs> there've been a number of reports of of uh, Russian bloggers crying because <laughs> Putin has um, has blocked off all the social media. I'm trying to get some good pictures because uh, it's all it takes you to. Uh, here we go. Let's put it up here. Should have just gone to the Daily Mail. I went to a different website and it didn't have any, any, uh, any nice pictures. Um, but yeah, we have Russian Russian bloggers crying because they don't have access to Instagram. You know, <laughs> good to see they've got their priorities in order. Um, but yeah, the sanctions are, are hitting hard. Um, you know, Russians are finding shopping a lot harder. But don't worry, you can't get you can't get Coca Cola anymore, or Starbucks, or McDonald's, or Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, but they're offering alternatives. You can get alternatives, um, and one of these 
uh, oh, what's it? I can't even name it. It's called uh, <laughs> it's called Tycoon. If I can pull it up on the screen, because I'm going to get the graphic up. It's a, a tarragon flavored soft drink. Mmm, mmm, a hundred percent tarragon. Mmm, I'm sure it's a very good replacement for for Coca Cola and Pepsi. Um, so yeah, so that's what they're suggesting. Go back, throw away your ideas of a Westernized life, and go back to all your all your Russian. <laughs> foods and drinks but the worst the worst thing that's happened due to the this is like tit for tat for sanctions tit for tat you know we, we we've you know, thrown various economic things at Russia and Russia's replied boy boy have they replied and who's been hit by these sanctions who's been hit Peppa Pig yeah um, a Russian court um, as has re- has released the um, the trademarks in in Russia. I guess basically you can do um, Peppa Pig ripoffs without any <laughs> any cause for alarm. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Judge Andrei Andrei Slavinsky said the iconic images can be used without permission now um, because Entertainment One, the company behind Peppa Pig, had claimed. Um, it was owed for Russian breaches of copyright because obviously there must be a massive, a massive industry in Russia for fake Peppa Pig cartoons, um, and yeah, and, and the judge who was who was holding the provincial arbitration court in Kirov um, said, "No, we can carry on doing this it's tit for tat." And he said, Judge Slavinsky said, the restrictive political and economic sanctions from the West over military invasion of Ukraine allowed the court to refuse infringement claims brought on by Entertainment One. So, yeah, there'll be lots of um, a Peppa Pigsky, Peppa Pigsky cartoons, talk about the glorious reign of Comrade Putin and his invasion of the world. Meanwhile, Daddy Pig is sent to the gulag for being an idiot. He's always an idiot, isn't he? So there you go. <laughs> Who'd have thought the first casualty in this would be Peppa Pig herself? Um, who'd have thought it? Let's pull up a picture. There you go. That's Peppa Pig. If, if you don't know who she is, there you go. <laughs> oh, boy. I just, I just, I'm left speechless. I've left speechless by that. Uh, meanwhile, this is the story. Shall we? Shall we have a, let's have a. Let's have a. Let's have some romance, shall we? This is the story of Nika Nikubin. Here she is. She looks nice. She looks lovely. Um, oh, it is her in, in better days. There you go. You're probably thinking, Fwah, and, and going on to Plenty of Fish, where she had a profile. Um, so, yeah. This, this is... <laughs> these stories are great. Uh, so she she met a fellow on, on Plenty of Fish, and the pair decided to meet up at the Sensei, Sunset Station Hotel on March the 5th. That's in... It's in Las Vegas, isn't it? Yes, yeah, in Las Vegas. And the 21 year old um, met, the, met this fellow there. They've not named the fellow. She put turned off the lights, put a blindfold on him, and, you know, do what people do. And then she retrieved a knife from her purse and began to st- stab him. Oh. And uh, yeah, so she's been charged with attempted murder. Luckily, he survived. Um, but she, her, the re- when she they asked why, um, she said it was she attacked the man as revenge against U.S. troops for killing uh, uh, Kassam 
Soleimani in 2020 because Trump approved the assassination of Iran's top general by drone strike. And then, uh, I don't think she's all there, is she? I don't think she's all there. Um, so yeah, but be careful who you meet on the dating sites. I think that's all we can, <laughs> that's all we can, all we can see. And I think what we'll do, shall we, shall we end on, shall we end on food news? Okay, yeah, this is a good one. Um, this is the story. This is again the story of Nigel Cooper. Got to get him, got to get get him up because the picture. If I show you the the full picture, you might st spoil the the story. But here's Nigel Cooper, right here he is. And he did the he did the family he did the family shop to treat everyone to to a good meal. And he went to um, he went to Aldi four ninety nine. He went to Aldi and he bought a steak. And when he put it in the pan, he says it's the most patriotic steak he's ever seen because it's it's the picture of Great Britain. There you go. Look, <laughs> it's Great Britain in steak form. Look, do you see? <laughs> He started, apparently he started eating the South Coast, working his way up, but he left Scotland for the following night. It was a lot, it was a lot to eat. It was a big steak. Mine's been that woman with the odd shaped Dorito who got off, offered 10 grand for it. We covered that last time. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's been coffee time. Try to keep it light and fluffy, even though the world's falling apart. Um, I don't know if there's anybody in the chat because you know, nobody nobody likes these videos. Pegasus is in. Has my groove been steady? Uh, Robert says, "Are they drinking uh, Cocap Colap instead? Perhaps they want the knockoff Chinese products." Who knows? Who knows? There are many fake. There are many fake things out there, including Robert Payne. <laughs> And Pegasus, both of these have been have been spoofed in the, in the live chats. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this a little brief respite from the misery and woe that was that purports for news these days. And we'll do this all again soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, drink it up, and uh, yeah, we'll do this all again tomorrow. So. Uh,